for joining us. I am Dr. Brent Blue, uh, uh, Teton County, Wyoming coroner. After a detailed investigation by our forensic pathologists, our anthropologists, and local law enforcement, uh, with assistance from the FBI, the Teton County Coroner Office is following the following verdict in the death of Gabrielle Lenora Petito. We hereby find the cause and manner of death to be the cause death by strangulation and manner is homicide. By Wyoming state statute, no other information will be released about the autopsy. The only thing that is released in the state of Wyoming is cause and manner of death. I think they said they can't hear you. Just one second. Should I start over then? Sure. Thank you for joining us. Sorry about the, the audio issue. I'm Dr. Brent Blue, uh, Teton County, Wyoming coroner. After a detailed investigation by our forensic pathologists, our anthropologists, and local law enforcement, with assistance from the FBI, the Teton County Coroner's Office is following the following verdict. In the manner of death of Gabrielle Lenora Petito, we find the cause and manner to be cause death by strangulation and manner uh, is homicide. By Wyoming state statute, only the cause and manner of death are released. Their uh, autopsy findings and photographs and that sort of material is not released uh, by state statute. And I'll be glad to entertain uh, some questions at this time. Hi, Brian, this is Alex with the News and Guide. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'm curious whether you're able to pinpoint a date of death and when, and if you know whether or when Gabby's remains will be returned to her family. The, the remains have been uh, 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 returned to the mortuary here, and the mortuary is dealing with the family at this time as far as the disposition of the remains. As far as the uh, time of death, uh, we are estimating three to four weeks from the time that uh, the body was found. Uh, that is actually going to be determined more by the uh, law enforcement folks than, the, uh, uh, than our office. Chris Vivian, you are able to ask your question. I, I, what's the question? I didn't hear a question. Uh, Chris, I believe that you are muted. If you can unmute yourself. Okay, it's, it's John Walsh from In Pursuit with John Walsh on Discovery ID. Dr. Blue, thank you for your time. I think everybody in the world believes that Brian Laundrie killed Gabby um, with your extensive work on the body, are you sure that it's Brian uh, Laundrie? And will the FBI issue a nationwide homicide uh, uh, warrant now that they know the cause of death? Uh, we are only tasked with the determination of cause and manner of death. Who committed the homicide is up to law, law enforcement. And I cannot answer the question about uh, the FBI. You would have to contact them. Jeremy Copas, you are now allowed to ask your question. Yes, hello, doctor. Um, if you could um, please, can you comment on any other bruising maybe um, on the body that possibly was um, healing, possibly older um, bruises or cuts that, that might have um, been healing over the last couple of weeks before um, her passing? By Wyoming state statute, no other information about the autopsy is released, just the cause of death. Hi there, this is Heather Lee, a reporter at ABC Action News in Tampa, Florida. I just wanted to know if you could explain um, why it took 
about a month for this process to finish. Um, I think a lot of people were hoping that they would learn this information sooner. So I just think if you could just explain the process and why it took a month. Well, the main reason was uh, that we were very exacting in our examination and the detail by which that examination was done. We were waiting for uh, 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 various uh, specialists to come in and, and help us with this investigation. We were waiting on toxicology uh, to be returned. And it was just a matter of making sure we had everything right. Thank you. Is there another question? Brian Enton. I believe you're unmuted right now. Okay. Uh, Steve Fabian. Yes, hi, doctor, how are you? I am curious if any DNA samples were taken from Gabby's remains, and also, if the body was intact, are you able to tell us the condition of Gabby's remains? Uh, I can tell you the DNA samples were taken by law enforcement, and all I can tell you about remains is that uh, the body was outside for three to four weeks. Chris Vivian, do you have your hand up? Was that a question? I, I didn't hear the question there. Question. Dr. Blue? Yes. It's John Walsh again from In Pursuit with John Walsh. Um, you will probably be the most important witness at the trial. And I asked you before how confident you feel that Brian uh, Laundry. And, you know, we, they use the semantics. He was a person of interest. I'm old school. He was the only suspect he ever. And um, I, I, uh, I just wonder, you're going to be the most important guy at the trial, probably. Um, do you have any doubts it's Brian Laundry? I can't make any comment about uh, uh, any suspects because we are not involved in that part of the investigation. We are only involved in the investigation of the uh, body of the deceased. So uh, who committed the homicide is really to be determined by law enforcement. Right. But I, I thank you for your hard work. And I, I always say in so many cases I've been involved in, let the pathologist and the coroner do their work no matter how long it takes. So I think you've probably done a really good job on this case. Thank you for your time. Hey there, doctor. This is Rochelle Aline with ABC Action News in Tampa. Just a quick question. Can you kind of walk us through uh, the process to how you arrived at this specific manner of death? In the state of Wyoming, there are four possibilities for uh, the, of a manner of death. They are homicide, suicide, accident, and natural. And those are the four choices. Uh, when we do an investigation, we look at, at the crime scene or the scene of the death. Uh, the scene of the body, the condition of the body, uh, and findings at autopsy and toxicology. And uh, that is how we arrive at the uh, manner of death. So it's, uh, it really depends on lots of different circumstances. Dr. Stephen Fabian, again from Inside Edition, can you tell us if the body was buried when it was discovered or it was if the body was on the surface? I, I can't tell you that that's uh, would be something you'd have to ask the FBI because we're not allowed to release that information. Um, Kelly Vaughn.
Do you have a question, Kelly Vaughn? Uh, we have Brian Enting in the chat who has a question. What's your question, Brian? Was there any impact on her body from weather or wild animals in the national park? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Was there any impact on her body from weather or wild animals in the national park? Uh, all I can really comment about that is that her body was outside in the wilderness for three to four weeks. KSL assignment, you are unmuted. KSL assignment. Hello, uh, Dan Rascone here from uh, KSL TV in Salt Lake. Dr. Blue, can you tell us at all whether or not, was it believed that she was murdered there at that location or is there any indication that her body was drugged there or taken there or can you give us any indication there? Uh, I can't comment on that. That would be something you'd have to speak with the law enforcement or the FBI. Matthew Sella? Matthew Sella, do you have a question? Hey, Dr. Blue. It's, uh, it's actually Jimmy from DailyMail.com in New York here. What were the results of the toxicology reports? And is there any suggestion that Gabby had any drugs in her system? And if so, what were they? The results of the toxicology are not public knowledge by why So I can't comment about that. Thank you. Um, we have a question from the chat. Uh, was Gabby Petito pregnant? She was not pregnant. Thomas Tope. Hi, doctor. Um, my question, did you seek the advice of a forensic entomologist or forensic botanist during the course of your investigation? Uh, the FBI has sent materials to uh, a forensic entomologist. WPBF 25 News. Hi, Doctor. This is Terry Parker from WPBF in Palm Beach County, Florida. I'm wondering if you said you were very thorough in this autopsy and examination. Could you give us an example of the type of test and um, uh, analysis as you performed? Uh, this autopsy uh, included a whole body CAT scan. Uh, a, a examination by a forensic uh, pathologist, an examination by a forensic uh, anthropologist, uh, and uh, toxicology uh, uh, evaluation. So uh, it was we pretty much covered all the bases. Jeremy Copas. Yes, uh, doctor. Thank you for taking the question again. You uh, mentioned that um, strangulation is the cause of death. Um, can you talk about how you received, how you came to that conclusion? I cannot. That is part of the autopsy findings uh, and is not uh, discoverable by Wyoming statute. Was there any other cause of death um, that you were, that was po a possibility in this case? Well, we look at all causes, uh, all possibilities uh, where we try to determine cause of death, uh, but that uh, this is the, the cause of death that we determined. I have a question um, from chat. It is, was the manner of death obvious, strangulation marks, bones, injured neck? Uh, the man, 
nothing is obvious in a situation like this. So uh, detailed analysis was used both to determine manner and cause of death. I can't go into details on how we made those uh, decisions. Kristen Thorne. Yes, hi, Dr. Kristen Thorne with WABC in New York. Could you just please repeat about how long you believe the body was out there? Unfortunately, the, the last time you spoke, you just didn't get a good uh, film shot of you saying that. Would you mind repeating that? Uh, our initial determination is the body uh, was in the wilderness for three to four weeks. Thank you. Jorge Fritz Gibbon. Uh, you have to unmute. I believe you're still muted. Sorry about that. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Blue. Um, relating back to the uh, date of death, is there a date listed on the death certificate? Uh, the death certificate has not been completed at this time. And the uh, death certificates of the state of Wyoming allow for approximate dates and, and uh, uh, variability in those dates. So uh, I doubt, well, there will not be a, a, an exact date of death. On the desert. Eileen with News 12. Um, hi, doctor. This is Eileen La Palmer from News 12. Um, we sort of asked it a little bit, but is there a way that you can explain how you know um, that it was strangulation? Um, it, sometimes I know that a hyoid bone, bone could be missing. Is that something that you discovered in this case? I can't comment on that because it would be a finding of, out of the autopsy. And as I stated before, in the state of Wyoming, the, the autopsy results are not public knowledge. So then you can't clarify whether it was manual strangulation or with an item, correct? That's correct. Michael Ruiz. Uh, thanks for making time for us, doctor. Was the entire examination conducted at your lab in Jackson or was Gabby Petito's body uh, shipped to another facility? The examination was done uh, entirely at our uh, board in Teton County, Wyoming. Anna de Greg Greg Gregorio. <laughs> Gregorio. It's actually a Ashley Banfield with News Nation. Um, doctor, thank you for taking the time to today. Can I ask you if? Um, from the very beginning of your process, was it obvious that the cause, not the manner, that the cause was strangulation and that you just needed this time to prove it out? Or were you completely unaware from the beginning what the cause of death was for Gabby Petito and had to resolve through a number of puzzle solving manners and other experts to arrive at that, um, final, um, that final cause determination? In a, in a situation like this, nothing is obvious. And so uh, the cause of death required investigation. Uh, we have a William Walkie. Hey there, Dr. Blue. My name is Will. I'm from a KHOL Jacksonville Community Radio here in Jackson. Um, you know, you're a small town coroner here in Western Wyoming. This case got so much national attention, as we can see right now. Can you speak on what it was like doing your job with such a big spotlight on you? Thanks. Well, it was quite the media circus uh, and continues to be. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is only one of uh, many deaths uh, around the country uh, of uh, people who are involved in domestic violence. And uh, it's unfortunate that uh, these other deaths do not get as much coverage as this one. I'm assuming that because the deceased was a blogger that this received more coverage uh, than others, but uh, there are a lot of, of both men and women who have lost their lives that aren't covered with this kind of media attention. Francis DeFiore. Uh, yes, hello, this is Francis DeFiore from the 
uh, Port Charlotte Sun. I uh, just want to uh, go back to my previous question, although I imagined your response. Uh, is there anything you can tell us about uh, how exactly you determined it was a three to four week period uh, before death? I can't go into that kind of information at this time. I understand. But, Thank you very much. Folks, this is JB Buno on WFLA Now. We are going to go back to the Zoom call here in just a second. We do have an update from the attorney of Brian Laundry. Stephen Bertolino has issued a statement. Why don't that's we have next. A question then? We have the uh, snack squad. Hey, this is Andy Mercado from Mercado Media. Could you go over the length of time the autopsy report took? And thank you for your time, Dr. Blue. Well, the length of time uh, was involved uh, in the sense that uh, we received a report from the investigating and examining forensic pathologist. Uh, we uh, had a report done by our anthropologist and we had uh, toxicology studies uh, that were done uh, in addition to the report from the radiologic studies. So all these came together and that's what uh, uh, took time for us to complete this investigation. Hi, doctor. Could you speak to the uh, state of decomposition and did that at all hinder your investigation? No, I can't comment on that. Dr. Blue, would you like to take any more questions? Uh, I, unless there's other specific questions that have been answered already. Why don't we uh, uh, close this and thank you all very much for, for uh, your participation. And uh, uh, I can tell you that uh, I will not be answering any other detailed questions about the autopsy. As I said, state statute uh, prevents us from doing that. So contacting me by email and phone is not gonna reveal any additional information. But thank you for your time, and I appreciate uh, uh, your interest. Dr. Blue, I have one more question. Is there a way to determine if this was accidental or deliberate? You mean in the sense of a homicide? Yes. Uh, that would be up to law enforcement to make that determination. Great. Thank you. Again, thank you all very much for your time. Breaking news on WFLA Now. Here is J.B. Buno. Gabby Petito, at just 22 years old, died of strangulation, according to the autopsy conducted by, who you just heard from, Dr. Brent Blue of the Teton County Coroner's Office. An answer that tells us how she died but so many of you here in the comments asking, will there ever be justice for Gabby? Hey there, folks. J.B. Buno here with you live on WFLA Now. Uh, that was, of course, I'm sure hard news for a lot of people to digest. Uh, Gabby Petito dying of strangulation, according to uh, this press conference that was called here today, October 12th, 2021 here, 2.30 Eastern Time, 12.30 Mountain. Uh, and you just heard from Dr. Brent Blue here, but we do get a really couple of key pieces of information here from dr blue and i want to start here justin if we can i'm frozen up buddy oh you are frozen yes. let's get that fixed let's get that fixed for we a lot of new information to go over yeah so let's let's fix the uh let's fix the the camera for justin and then we can get him back and now he is back there we are um, okay so the key piece of information justin three to four weeks three to four weeks again the, the main headline the the cause of death according to the teton county coroner is strangulation Again, they had uh, previously told us her death was a homicide. He again confirmed that today. Uh, again, the, the coroner says they believes her body was in the wilderness there for three to four weeks um, from the time it was found to, from before when she was, was killed. Um, he was very tight-lipped on questions about who might have been responsible. JB, we saw a few questions uh, from John Walsh about the person of interest in this case. But again, he said that is up to the law enforcement community to determine who is responsible for her homicide. Let's get to some of the comments and questions that are coming in here. We have uh, 
of course, let you know that you can use hashtag HJB, hey hashtag hey Justin. Um, we're live across all of our platforms right now, WFLA.com, the WFLA app. Uh, WFLA's Facebook page and WFLA's YouTube page as well. Hello to all of our interactive audiences here. So let's get to uh, some of the comments and questions that have come in here over the last uh, several minutes. And I want to get right to it, right into it. From Kim Brower here, hashtag AJB. If the time of death is three to four weeks, let me explain Kim's comment here, exactly what was said here. So from the body being found, that was September 19th is when the body was discovered there. Correct. The remains that, of course, then were, they would go on to confirm, match the description, and then was, in fact, Gabby Petito. It was three to four weeks before that that Gabby Petito died of strangulation. And those dates are, so within that three to four week time window now, yep. that makes it uh, August uh, 22nd to August 29th. But I'm going to bring up here, I'm going to put away, I'm going to read Kim's yeah. comment here, then I'm going to put it away because we're going to get to the timeline here. And Walt, I see Walt Buteau is, is, is hanging out. And Walt, if you'd like to sit down, you're more than welcome to sit on a mic if you'd like. We're kind of all just kind of processing this news here in the newsroom. Kim Brower, hashtag KJB, if the time of death is three to four weeks, that means that he killed her right after being separated. Could this be why he came home for a week to get his exit prepared? And this is just one of the different types of uh, different types of, of comments that we're seeing out there. Um, Kim, but let's put away your comment Can I really just quickly. Jump yes, in real quick on this. Absolutely. I think this more fits into that period of the 27th to the 30th, JB. Yep. That is when the yep. FBI has put out um, a request for information from people who are in the Bridger Teton National Forest Spread Creek uh, dispersed camping area, the 27th to the 30th. So again, he has that three to four week window. I'm still honed in on those days, the 27th to the 30th. He was also asked about whether an actual date of death will be put on her death certificate. He said it might just be a, a date range. They might never know exactly the date it was, JB, but I'm honed in on about three and a half weeks before the 19th would fall right in that 27th to the 29th of August. Those are the dates I'm most honed in on from this news conference. I, I agree, and I think we also have to focus on the 27th is the last day <clears throat> that somebody saw her. The 27th is the last day she texted her mother, and the doctor, the, the coroner also pointed out, under Wyoming law, he doesn't have to put a date on there. He yep. can put a date range yep. um and again you got you and and by the way the 27th is also the day that that the van was spotted, spotted by the, the video yep. the uh the um the woman the from bloggers, Spring Hill, the family, right the bl or, so yeah. so the 27th again i agree with justin i think that that period of time is still there obviously it's possible they can go all the way back to that four week range but i think they kind of do that yeah. out of precaution right i still think those three dates are key i want to really quickly show our audience here a live picture from we'll tap, tap the touch screen here we'll go live to outside of the laundry home here we're just keeping an eye here on the laundry home here to see if there's any neighbors that gather outside this is now of course uh, a story that has uh, that has led to this day as far as the coroner releasing the cause of death for Gabrielle Petito and it being that Gabby Petito died of strangulation. Uh, let's hey, JB, if I could just jump in one yeah. more thing, because you, you yep. did tease this, uh, our colleague Masa Saidi during that news oh, that's conference, right. that's right, and yep. I have it right here to read if you don't mind, if I can go ahead, JB. Absolutely. Um, so as we take a look at the laundry home, a reminder at this point, the only crime that Brian Laundry has been charged with is debit card fraud. This is the news statement just into the newsroom, uh, courtesy of our colleague investigator Masa Saidi. It says, quote from Stephen Bertolino, Gabby Petito's death at such a young age is a tragedy. While Brian Laundrie is currently charged with the unauthorized use of a debit card belonging to Gabby, Brian is only considered a person of interest in relation to Gabby Petito's demise. At this time, Brian is still missing. When he is located, we will address the pending fraud charges against him, end quote. That is the new statement, a courtesy of Masa Saidi from Stephen Bertolino. What jumped out to me, JB, is that this statement acknowledges that he is accused yes. of fraud using Gabby's card, yep, yep, which the, the charging thing. document did not say. Right. Um, the family attorney on Dr. Phil did say they believed it was her card. Here is the attorney for the Laundry family acknowledging that he is charged with unauthorized access to her bank account, which I think is significant. I'm sure that it's, it's just small compared to the looming charge that could be out there, provided could that, be. of course, if he is named a suspect, uh, that charge, of course, being, you know, w would that charge be murder? Um, th so... Uh, uh, debit card uh, that that charge of use uh, use of unauthorized access devices of an amount uh, aggregated to more than a thousand dollars it's probably really small time compared to of course what could be uh, around the corner here but again we got to stay rooted in reality because listen listen Stephen Bertolino is 100 percent right I know that there's a lot of comments here flying up and down our screens here from YouTube and on Facebook right now as frustrating as it might be for some of our audience joining us here live right now 
Brian Laundry is still just a person of interest. But he's in wanted Gabby for Petito this Thomas. federal charge, and that obviously changed his status from just a missing person to a wanted fugitive. And that was a significant, another one of the twists, JB, in this whole case. Um, another headline, a rumor we can say is is now put to rest, is the coroner did say she was not pregnant. That, you know, yep. that's been a lot of speculation. There's another a hard no when that was asked. So I want to mention that to any of our viewers just joining us. There have been speculations analyzing photos near the the white van but the coroner came out and said definitively uh, miss petito was not pregnant at the time of her death we have a ton of hashtag hey jb hashtag hey just you can also now use of course hashtag hey walt for eight on your side senior investigator walt buteau joining us uh, here in our stream center and let's um let's get to let's get to debbie solis's comment because justin you you shouted this out to the newsroom as soon as we as we heard this debbie yeah has to kjb has to k justin did dr blue he made the statement regarding domestic abuse did he slip up there to in me, that I, moment I, I think he might have again john walsh asked the question on everybody's mind could a certain person of interest have done this he said that is not my job that is the role of the fbi and law enforcement but when asked about all the attention this case has received he did make note of there are a lot of, sadly, other instances of domestic violence across the country. And the use of those two words, I did not expect to hear that, JB. For most of the press conference, he was very straightforward with and, the medical analysis. Yep. But he did make that comment. And as uh, Debbie heard it, I shouted out here in the newsroom. I, I, I was surprised to hear that mention as well. But we do know, JB, as we've talked about the... the positives from this tragedy again we don't know all the answers here we'll go what they say that there has been a, a raising awareness we know gabby's father has talked about if you're in a bad relationship look to get out there and hopefully this awful tragedy can lead to other positive change for people who are in in bad relationships I, I was surprised by the domestic abuse comment there walt uh given the of course the magnitude of the viewership, the amount of people that, that watching, were watching. Yeah. I think we had about a quarter million or so people watching just our stream. I can't imagine all the live streams across the internet, just how many people were watching that moment. So, Walt, I'm sure you were su as surprised as any that that was uttered. We heard Dr. Blue there saying repeatedly, I have to stay focused on what the what the what the results of the autopsy are, what the body tells me. He can't even go into super specifics without compromising, of course, the federal investigation. So for him to say that there, that's a curious moment, of course, here in the um, Doctor, in the press Dr. conference. Dr. Blue also reflected on after a question by it seemed like a I think it was a Jackson, Wyoming reporter um, about. And I think he called him, whether it's true or not, a small town coroner. I mean, has he, he's never has he faced that much media, nor will he probably ever yep, again. Yep. Um, so did he slip up? Perhaps he could have got caught up in the moment that many people actually for for many days have insisted this must be a case of domestic abuse. That's why it's getting so much attention, right? We saw domestic abuse in this case involving Gabby Petito to hint that the end of her life involved domestic abuse, obviously a potential slip up. But, but again, you know, it's, it's a, puzzle that's being put together and to Justin's point about the um, about now knowing it's Gabby Petito's credit card because the attorney said that that is something that um, that's something that many people have reached out to me that I kept saying we didn't know it was Gabby Petito's credit card because we didn't the we document didn't. didn't say it we know her her, her, her family attorney did, told Dr. Say it to Phil me. yeah they didn't say it to me yep. now we have the attorney saying it so he, again it's pieces to the puzzle the direct quote we can go back listen to the tape was that Dr. Blue said this is one of many deaths involved in domestic violence those are the, the words I jotted down here as he said that so we'll go back listen to the tape and um, again it was it was a surprising moment given how tight-lipped he was about a lot of the questions uh, you know in the Mr. speculation going to get a lot of questions about that statement obviously yeah well, the, 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 it, the money, this was dr blue the one i know but mr bertolino is going to oh, get questions oh, yeah. about that statement right yeah. yep. let, let me yep. let me pass along here one more time i want to read stephen bertolino's statement one more time because people are still asking for it one yeah. more time this is stephen bertolino brian laundry's attorney now responding here during the press conference yep. now not even waiting for the press conference to be over responding during the press conference and it reads as follows gabby petito's death at such a young age is a tragedy while brian laundry is currently charged with the unauthorized use of a debit card belonging to gabby brian is only considered a person of interest in relation to gabby petito's demise at this time brian is still missing and when he is located we will address the pending fraud charge against him uh, in in the words of the 
uh, Petito family attorney, he is, quote, hiding, not missing. That is what Mr. Stafford has said on the record since uh, he was reported missing. Really quick, because we're about to lose this shot here. Just one more quick look here from outside of the home here. Uh, very quiet outside of the laundry home. So people were asking, what is it like outside the home right now? Uh, nothing to report as far as any activity there at the laundry home. Uh, back with you here live on WFLA Now. Let's bring Walt back in here. J.B. Buno, Justin Shecker, 8 on your side, Senior Investigator Walt Buteau joining us uh, here, everybody. You can use any of the hashtags here on your screen, and we can feature your comments here live on WFLA Now. But I really want to get now into the timeline and asking and taking some of the questions like these, and you can use these hashtags, everybody. We can animate your comments on screen if you do so. Angel Morgan, hashtag KJB. If you came back to Florida on August 17th to clean out a storage room, has anyone checked on the storage room? He strangled her and probably out of anger. Again, this is just the, one of the comments here from our from our audience here. And then also to Maggie Joanna, hashtag KJB. Hi, I had a question. When was the last text message to her mom regarding Stan? So let's that's get it. Let's, let's get it. Let's get into this. We're going to no, scroll here. We're going to scroll here together on that's our screen. That's the one that she called odd. She said it was odd because she didn't call her grandfather stand yep let's kind of go through this here yeah, together now good. and now we can kind of piece together now this timeline a little bit okay everybody this is the timeline from wfla.com and the wfla app august 17th gabby posts photos from arches national park in moab utah brian flies home to florida from salt lake city to obtain some items and empty a close storage unit to save money, according to attorney Stephen Bertolino. So Brian flies home, leaves Gabby, flies home to Florida, leaves Gabby on August 17th. Scrolling down here on WFLA.com, August 19th, Gabby and Brian post an eight-minute video documenting the beginning of their van life journey on their Nomadic Static YouTube channel. That coming while Brian, of course, was in Florida uh, that being posted, that eight-minute video being posted to their social account. Okay, fast forward now to August 21st, and I'll explain how this now impacts the timeline that we've just now gotten some key dates here. Gabby's father, Joe Petito, last speaks with his daughter in a FaceTime call on August 21st. He helps her order a pizza in Salt Lake City and talks to her about the trip so far. He later says that he notices no red flags during this conversation here on august 21st now there should be now a new and we'll add this or we'll try to add this here yeah. the 22nd now would be four would, weeks thank you justin would be four, four weeks, weeks before her body's found in the in the wilderness which would be now according to and and we don't know if if how precise that timeline is but according to dr brent blue three to four weeks before the body was found is when she died of strangulation which means that the most early date would be August 22nd. Yeah. However, Brian flies back to Salt Lake City to rejoin Gabby on the 23rd. And on the 25th now, on August 25th, now three days after that four-week point here in, yeah. in the timeline, Gabby's mother, Nicole Schmidt, last speaks with her daughter on the phone while Gabby was near Grand Teton National Park in mm -hmm. Wyoming. So couldn't, uh, based, based on this timeline and based on, on what we have as far as the events here, couldn't have died August uh, 22nd, uh, 23rd, or 24th based on this phone call that Nicole says that yeah. she got from Gabby on the 25th. Again, I'm still honed in on the 27th to the 30th. Th okay. Those, those that, are the dates. And we'll that's keep, what we're getting. Keep scrolling down. Yeah, we'll keep scrolling that. down yep. here. Now down to August 27th. This is where, okay, back to the commenter here, Maggie Joanna here, hashtag KJB. I had a question. When was the last text message to her mom regarding Stan? So, Gabby asking you shall receive. Gabby's mother receives an odd text on August 27th that leaves her a little worried that something is wrong, according to the search warrant. Gabby and Brian visit a restaurant in Wyoming. Staff mem members and other diners later recall an unspecified incident with the couple. And the restaurant did put that out on their Instagram page, saying yep. that they had contacted the authorities about whatever they observed that day. There was a, yeah, there was another blogger from New Orleans who saw the, Instagram says and, she yep. saw the couple at the restaurant and that Brian uh, got angry with a waitress that they left. Um, so again, that's 27th, but I guess, you know, did they, was it really Gabby? We don't know, but it seems like they yeah. fit the description. And again, the 27th, we think what later in the afternoon is when, is when the, the red, white, and, the red, white and Bethune yes. bloggers on their um, GoPro, they spotted saw, the white, spotted the white yep, van the in an there. area that tipped off investigators. The to next where day they the, found her body. Where the body they, was would, they wouldn't specifically confirm that to us as they went into question, it but it was in that window point. Yep, that yeah. they were able to narrow down where yeah. she could be. 
In this August 30th, Gabby's mother receives a final text from Gabby, but does not confirm over the phone that it was her. Yep. And then, of course, August 30th to September 1st, Brian Laundry uses a Capital One bank debit card and personal ID number for and two bank accounts. And we can add accounts. that citing the attorney... It's her card. It is Gabby's card. And that, and that from the news release, not the court document, but the FBI news release, said, from the news re release said the crime con uh, happened following Gabby's the yep. death of Gabby Petito. And so we now, again, can at least believe, again, allegedly, because the, the, this is science, it's, it's not exact, but the charge would say that she was dead sometime on the 30th um, and then before, the, before the, that. Before yeah. So, again, the 27th to the 30th looms large in the end of this girl's life. It, it does. Yeah. These final days here of, of August, uh, were, the timeline has been condensed after, of course, being dissected and being, uh, of course, so many points being added on the timeline. Yeah, it's and it, it's really, really become more concise here. And we now have a better idea as to when uh, Gabby Petito lost her life. And again, and, for those of you just and, joining us, it was of strangulation, according to the coroner. And with that, we now also know, uh, we don't know, but it would be interesting to get a legal expert on here because because strangulation is, is going to be a... Uh, that's, we're, we're not talking if it's if it's proven in court. We're not talking about criminally negligent homicide with a strangulation. We're not talking about uh, manslaughter. We are more than likely talking about first or second degree. I'm not an attorney, but strangula You know, if it was uh, if it was a blunt force trauma and she fell is one thing, but uh, strangulation. Uh, I think a lawyer would tell us, no matter who did it, um, that there that intent there's an intent with that intent particular at crime. Least, at least harm. You didn't intent stop, harm, right? Yeah. Intent to harm, sure, yeah. right? That's true. I, I've been interacting with some of the folks on Reddit on the Gabby Petito subreddit, and I think really what what needs to happen now, and I know that that, that that I've already seen a little bit of this going on, but there needs to be now a zoomed in timeline. Assumed it. We, we have, of course, a very broad timeline. I mean, this timeline here, for example, on WFLA.com go goes all July. the way back yep. to July 2nd when they left. Yeah. But what there needs to be now is a super hyper specific timeline uh, for those dates for, for really the August. Week, the last week of August. I really, mean, the last week of August. From the when he 25, 25th to the 30th. Yeah. Yep. Yep. To really the thirty first to, to really to the up until the, to the first, the first when of he September comes back all yeah. the way across country what eighteen twenty four hour drive back to yeah and that's something that we're going to be working on here now as far as now really getting into the nitty gritty of those final days here yeah. and and because now we have it confirmed here from a credible law enforcement or credible of course agency here as far as the coroner's office here we can really now get super hyper specific as this, as to the timeline on those various days. Yeah. Uh, let's get to um, this question for you, Walt, and it comes from Lori Ann. Uh, hashtag, hey, Walt, could the parents be charged for hindering the investigation? So, you know, there's federal charges, there are state charges. Um, hindering the investigation, I believe, yes, in both cases. Um, but, uh, but and that would involve getting in the way of the investigation, hiding this or hiding that. Accessory after the fact in Florida and federally, uh, first and second degree. There's first and second degree where um, you could be charged, but there's also a third degree where a parent can't be charged. There's immunity for a parent in a third degree case where they cannot be charged, but in this case, um, it, it seems like it would be a first or second degree. So the parent, I, I don't even, I don't like this question. I'm, I'm actually sorry I, I answered it because the parents aren't charged with anything and we don't want to speculate, but they're, you know, they're definitely charges are, are possible in cases like this, but nothing's been proven about those parents at all. Nothing. Again, J.B. Buno, Walt Buteau, uh, Justin Checker here, everybody, getting to some of the other comments and questions that have come in here. And um, how about Maddie, Maddie Goddard, hashtag hey, J.B., hashtag hey, Justin. It was so frustrating, people asking questions, even though he clearly stated he can't answer because it's against Wyoming law. And, Walt, it's not even just against Wyoming law. It's really against federal law. Right, I mean, federal right, law, federal, right. an ongoing federal investigation. Right. There was really only so much that we were going to get here. And there were, some, there were some folks out there saying we didn't know we, we didn't know if we were going to get the cause of death, but we now have it, of course, that it was strangulation. And I'm trying to go here. I'm going to go back to my, my notes here, you know, answering a question there from Ashley Banfield and asked, you know, was it obvious? Right. Good question. You know, this was something this was something I was wondering. I'm, I'm glad that Ashley asked it. Uh, Ashley, part of News Nation, um, asked if it was, you know, coroners, they, they do 
hundreds, if not thousands of medical examinations, many of them, of course, some of the more experienced ones across the country. And it's going to be some, some are going to be more obvious than others. We've talked about this on stream before and that, um, that some are just going to be pretty clear cut. Others are going to exact words were in this case, nothing is obvious. And that could just be sort of his, his, his approach to conducting an autopsy. And, and it's a uh, smart thing for him to say. It is, it is. It's very smart for him to say. And, but he says nothing is obvious and um, it might have, it might not have been something that, that right off the bat that he knew was strangulation when, of course, he began the autopsy itself. And you, you think about it. He began the, the autopsy was two weeks ago, three weeks, or the, the body was discovered two weeks ago. What's the timeline? September 19th. September, September 19th. 19th. Yeah. So almost three weeks ago. Is that right? Coming up on a, yeah. So, and the body had been there for a while. I would bet that in this case, nothing was obvious. Uh, very well makes sense. Uh, the body had been there a little while, we, we think, and sadly, um, so how obvious could it have been? Um, any Anything could it have been. But we, you, you can also reflect back on, they somehow knew it was a, hom or knew, they suspected it was a homicide one or two days after the body was found. So something told them, and that was the FBI that held that news conference, by the way. The FBI does not doesn't uh, doesn't say things that uh, that they're not sure of. Obviously, law enforcement tends to not do that, but especially the FBI. And for them to say that one or two days after something must have been apparent, if not obvious, that led them to believe it was a homicide. Getting to some other questions and comments that are coming in here, and I'm just reading through some of them. You can use hashtag KJB, hey folks. Uh, uh, file them in hashtag hey Justin, uh, hashtag Hey Walt. You know, let's let's just. I, I I would just like to just kind of address just just something that I was thinking about. And I'm sure a lot of w we're thinking about. Um, it's it's uh, that this is to strangle somebody, to 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 strangle the life out of another human being. And, and if anybody follows any, you know, any true crime, you know, uh, documentaries, anything like that, they, you know that to strangle somebody is such a, first of all, it's such a, such a God, it's just a God awful way to go. It, it's just so terrible. It's just absolutely so terrible. And it is, and I have heard experts say that it is an extremely, um, it's a, it's a, it, there's no good way to die. But there's, it's an extremely personal me way it's, method. I was going to say the same thing. Of I've killing heard that, somebody. Right, I've heard that from investigators. To to Absolutely. literally choke the Absolutely. life out of somebody. It's horrifying. And we don't know whether or not, when it comes to strangulation here, whether or not a fight occurred and things just got carried away. We don't know if if there was an intent for this person to to literally choke the life out of her and end her life, or it was a fight that. Or it was just some kind of a, of a of a struggle, an altercation that got out of hand, and and it happened, and it wasn't intended. It was just a you know an but altercation now, that got out of hand. But it's just such a a personal and wet means to kill another human being. There, and, the intent factor, though, yeah. is uh, the intent factor has a extra dose of, of resonance here, uh, just because of that particular cause. And one thing the coroner would not say is whether or not the body was dragged or, or buried anywhere, you know, as to where they found it, if that's where the actual strangulation occurred. He declined to answer that, saying that would be part of the police investigation. So we don't know if that was the place where the strangulation right. happened. And I, wanna, right. I just want to, I, I just want to, one more time here, just kind of explain what I meant by that. No, I know you, I, I know. And, and, and I know. for our audience, I know that you guys yes. know, but I want to explain what I meant by that comment. You you kill somebody with with a with a gunshot to the head. Let's just say that that manner of of homicide, that manner of murder, that is one moment where you pull a trigger, and then if of course if it's a fatal if it's a fatal blow with the firearm, that's that. It's you you can't really go back in time. It, it, it's over with. Now you can't go back in time with with any meat. But what I was getting at is that when you. Str when, the means of strangulation, killing somebody via strangulation, you're doing it, it's not instantaneous. You're doing it over a period of time. Yeah. And you have time, even though you're probably, you're, you know, that person, the suspect, the killer in this case, is in tremendous emotional distress, as of course the, the person is in, in, the victim in the case is in, in tremendous emotional, physical, all kinds of distress. I mean, they're having literally the life choked out of them. They have an opportunity, while the suspect is doing this, 
to stop, to, to, to think, to stop and process. But that, that didn't happen here. That we have a, a manner of death via strangulation where somebody strangled Gabby Petito to death and didn't, didn't stop when they had an opportunity to. And you, you have an opportunity to and you, and you didn't. And you didn't. There are, um, I've covered many a court cases where I've seen defense attorneys argue about uh, wh if someone, was sh someone shot someone to death about intent. And you'd think, well, you got your finger on the trigger. Uh, you didn't intend for, to kill them. But intent can be, I remember an attorney doing this in court, in t intent can happen like this with a gunshot. Again, did I mean to kill the guy? Did I not mean to kill the guy? And that, that ups the charge. That ups what the charge is. But, yeah, I think intent in this sort of case, uh, in a strangulation, I, you know, if you believe the Internet, a strangulation takes right there three, on your to, three to five minutes. Three yeah. to five minutes. And Jen Saucy here saying, and I have heard this terminology used as well, that strangulation is considered a crime of passion. Um, it's face to face, right? Eyes yeah, unless eyes. you're unless you're doing it unless you're doing it from behind or in perhaps or it's after using, the fact or it's after the fact or using a device. Unconscious. Yep. Um, and, and all we, horrible, all horrible stuff. All it's it's all just it's god awful to envision. Yeah. And and what's what was really I'm sure gut wrenching for a lot of folks. And, and it's it's only human to feel this way. Is that we've been looking here at pictures of Gabby Petito. We've been looking here at pictures of Brian Laundrie. And while again, Brian Laundrie is not a suspect in her homicide, just a person of interest. We've seen these pictures, and to think about it ending via strangulation, it's just a, it's just a, it makes your heart drop. It makes your it makes your your, your heart sink. Um, it, it was just it was um, it, it's it's a difficult. Um, difficult day for I'm sure many of our WFLA now viewers. Um, I, I just want to, if anybody wants to, to talk about it, I'm, I'm here in, in any capacity that I can be. We're going to stay here with you live for a little bit longer. Justin, um, Walt, how, how long do you guys have here? I think we were going to try to go a, a, a little longer here. How I'm, long? I'm fine. I'm JB. fine. JB. I'm we fine. can, we okay. can hang as long as you need to. Yeah. These guys of course have their television reports to file for WFLA news channel eight. Um, let's, let's get to this one here from Angela Kush and, um, I'll let you guys take this one. I want to really get a lot of from across all of our platforms here. Hashtag AJB, hey hashtag hey Justin, hashtag hey Walt comments and questions here. So start following them in here now if there's something you want us to, to feature here on, on stream. But uh, Walt, can you read this question here? Yeah, so Stan was her grandfather, according to uh, Nicole Schmidt, Gabby's mother. Stan was her grandfather's name. Um, I'd heard somewhere there was... a potential plans to visit him at some point but the but Nicole Schmidt told police in one of our first affidavits in this case a search warrant affidavit for either electronics the or the van yeah. one of the two that uh, that she found it odd she called it quote odd that her daughter would refer to to the uh, her grandfather by his first name and of course at that point we don't have the other like you talked about the timeline we don't have the other points in the timeline filled in so when she said it was odd there was, was a lot of speculation that may be eliminated now that that was not sent by Gabby, but the code Stan. I was about to look it up. Uh, my wife actually told me about that. Hmm. Stan is a is code for. Do you know JB off the top of your head? Um, you heard that? Send. Um, send something. I just. Now? I just had it. Stan, code. Send the authorities now. Thank you. Send huh. the authorities now. Of course. Uh, I mean, it, it'd be also off, it, it would be awfully coincidental that her grandfather's name is Stan and she said Stan as a code, but anything's possible. Anything's possible. And that's wow. on the 27th when the van's, when the van is spotted. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the Stan is the, we, here's what we know. Stan is the grandfather, according to Nicole Schmidt. It was odd for Gabby to use the word Stan in a, to call her grandfather by the name Stan. We know that. We don't know about the code. Let's get to some other questions and comments that are coming in here, and I'm going to try to add as many. Uh, Megan Den asking a great question, hashtag hey JB, hashtag hey Walt, and, and Justin, we were talking about this while the press conference was underway. Can you go over the toxicology report again? We didn't get any toxicology information here in this press conference. He did not reveal any uh, results of the toxicology. Uh, he went over, you know, there's four potential manners of death, homicide, a natural death, accidental death, this obviously being with a homicide by strangulation. Uh, but again, for the most part, Dr. Brent Blue was fairly tight-lipped, and he did not reveal any toxicology results. Let's get to this one here from... I'll, t I'll let you take this one here, Walt. Uh, it's from Donovan Roos, hashtag AJB. Is this now considered a murder investigation? Homicide is the blanket of somebody... Uh 
being killed by someone else, murder is a charge. There's first, depending on Wyoming and the fed, there's federal law, if this falls under federal law, which it very well might be, there is a death penalty for certain types of murders under federal law. I, I don't know if we have a federal manslaughter or criminally negligent homicide charge, but you have generally you have first degree murder, which uh, is many times punishable by death if there's a death penalty in the state. Most death penalties would involve a second sort of um, um, uh, um, felony in order to get the death penalty. Um, and then you have a second degree murder, which would, which would sort of go to, again, that intent, what did you mean to do? And and it would establish penalty, but no, this is this is a this is still a homicide investigation until we have a suspect who is charged with anything that I just men mentioned. You're not going to be charged with homicide. You're going to be charged with either a federal crime or a state crime, and it'll tell us at that point whether or not it's a murder investigation. We don't have that yet. We have a person of interest, and we have a suspect in a uh, credit card uh, fraud case. Let's get to this one here from. And I'm, I'm trying to get to as many of here as possible, and some of them are are repeating. But, you know, we, we got to bring this. We, we, I talk all the time about, on the stream about being rooted in reality. And then, of course, I always talk about um, the realm of possible, right? What is within the realm of possible and what is not within the realm of possible? And people don't want to – it's difficult because there are some people that don't want to consider certain possibilities, but are they technically within the realm of possible? How about Amanda Green? Hashtag KJB, is there a way to prove it wasn't strangulation during intimacy with the two? So that down the road, if they find Brian, they can't say that it was an accident and they couldn't determine, or they couldn't say there in the press conference, as I understand, if I remember correctly from my notes here, I'm looking at my notes, that there was nothing that they could say as far as publicly whether or not there was the intent and whether or not it could have been uh, accidental strangulation and whether or not there was a, you know, a device involved. But um, was it, could it have been strangulation during intimacy between the two? Uh, I, I'm sure that investigators have to consider that within the realm of possible as unlikely as it might be. Well, it's, it's, it would be a potential defense, but keep in mind, nobody has to prove what it wasn't. The government has to prove, prove what, what it, it was. Is. Yeah. And the, the defense attorney's job, they don't have to prove that so-and-so did not do something. They put out, uh, they put out their, their various, they can put out theories in a case. I, I remember a, a Southern attorney once calling them rabbit trails. They want the prosecution, not, I'm sorry, not the prosecution. They want to send the jury down a rabbit trail. You could send the jury, and that's not... You know, it could be strangulation during this. Who knows? But the point is, that would be a possible defense. But the, but, but, uh, the, the government is going to set up a case to prove what it was. They're not going to worry about what it wasn't. Right. It's got to be beyond a, a reasonable doubt. And, uh, but quite frankly, when you look at the Moab incident um, and you look at, at the evidence of there being domestic disputes uh, between between Gabby yeah. Petito and between Brian Laundry here, um, it, it it's just again. Uh, Walt makes a good point. Does it get used as a potential defense if this ever does reach a courtroom and this ever does reach a trial? Uh, that would be, of course, up to Stephen Bertolino if he is in fact retained as the attorney for a, a you know this reaching the trial phase. But first and foremost, you got to find Brian Laundry. But again, we, we don't have a suspect. You don't have a suspect right now, so we we have to keep. We have to, of course, talk about what's within the realm of possible and what not uh, within just, the realm of possible. Still not having a suspect. One other detail from the press conference for viewers joining us afterwards. The coroner did say that DNA was taken off the body and turned over to the FBI, whether that is just obviously her DNA or any other potential DNA that was on her. One other nugget I did want to mention That's from the news really conference. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know what? That theoretically, although, I mean, if you think about it, does that there... Uh, they're, they're obviously, if they had uh, embraced, if they had been in the same car, yeah. you could argue away that DNA. So it just depends on where it was and what it was. Uh, yeah. So Let's get this. Um, uh, Kells Moulton, hashtag AJB, hashtag Walt. Interesting thought. If Brian really sent the text about Stan on the 27th, how did he unlock her phone if she was already deceased? Um, I, I can... I don't know. I, I mean, I, I know my wife's passcode to, to her phone um did, did um Walt, do you do you know do you all know the we know, all we know i 
Do I know my wife's passcode? Do you know? Yeah, I'm, I, think I'm, I'm, just, I think it's a fingerprint. To be honest, so no, uh, that would be a no. But then there's always the passcode to, to right. back up the fingerprint. Right. So I don't, don't really go into my wife's right. phone. So I'll try it tonight. But, but no, I, <laughs> I got I I to be able to again, take the pictures. I, I, you know, let's root, as you say. You are you know, you have a little more leeway as the host, if you will. But rooting it, in fact, we know, all we know is the mom did consider an odd text. And we, and we know it happened on the 27th. We know she was spotted on the 27th. And we know the car was spotted on the 27th right before in an yeah. area what how close was the car did we ever figure we don't we they, don't know the exact location of where the body was found but it's in general area general area again we know that's the part of the uh, bridger teton forest that the fbi has been asking for and more they wanted tips information from, from the 27th that 7th to, to the 30th. 30th yep so yeah i didn't know about the this the acronym you brought up today i mean that's fascinating that was brought what you're up saying. to me right yeah, but again and the authorities isn't it a now little coincidental that that's, that 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 would also yeah. be your grandfather's name yeah yeah. Hmm. And I, I mean, there's been a lot of commentary online as to whether or not Gabby was trying to send that acronym S-T-A-N. Um, but we it's just it's it, we just don't know. We just don't we know. May, the, we probably will never know. Never. Yeah. That answer. I'm really glad that this question, it just came in. We got some others in the queue here, but I want to take this one that just popped in a moment ago from Hannah Grell. Hashtag KJB. Will this intensify the manhunt for Brian. Guys? Look, we've talked a lot of the here in Florida, they've been focused on the Carlton Reserve area and they keep going back out there. We talked about how his, his father assisted the search there. Look, there have been possible sightings up and down the Appalachian Trail into the North Carolina area that local law enforcement sheriff's office have been following up on those leads. Look, this, this guy's photo is everywhere at this point. Now we're going on since the base say September 13th is the last time his parents say they saw him. I don't know if intensify. I think he remains a wanted fugitive. He is wanted for questioning in, in her death, and he's wanted for that debit card fraud. And again, we'll keep sharing this story, JB. We'll keep putting his face out there here in our other uh, you know, Next Star stations, News Nation. We're going to keep covering this until there is some closure as to where he is and what does he know. But his face at this point is everywhere, JB. And it, it's going to be that... that breaking the case someone you know credible sighting that leads to him so i don't know if intensify but it, it obviously is something on the minds of law enforcement the fbi all over florida into the the east coast where he may have may not have been seen i would also i would also say i don't think we know how intense it is we know it looks different locally yep but i'm i'm just gonna put it out i'm gonna say i'm not going out on much of a limb to tell you i'm pretty sure and i'd be disappointed if it was otherwise <clears throat> that this this search is going on in far more locations than we know about and that the tips that are being researched are far greater than the ones we know about keep in mind not everybody comes to the media with hey i saw i saw brian laundry we're getting the people who are either bold enough or forward enough to do that i'm sure i, t I called somebody in illinois who had a tip supposedly but but she wouldn't comment. And then another person in the same area, he, he said, I can't comment. And so they sort of respected perhaps what was said to them by the FBI, yep. FBI or not. But the point is intensify. It's hard to tell how intense it is now. I'm pretty sure the FBI wants this guy because it is consuming the office in Denver and probably many other office, offices too. Here's another thing that we don't know. We, we don't know. And, and we know that today is is October 12th, 2021, and today the public found, found out what the coroner says is the cause of death for Gabby Petito. I know from, from talking to the family that, um, that they found out in advance of this press conference, so they knew ahead of time. But we don't know how long the FBI has known. Yeah. We don't know when the coroner got to the point where the FBI could be looped in as to the cause of death. That, was that something that occurred this week or last week or weeks, probably not weeks ago? You would imagine that it was sometime recently, but this notion out there, this, to, to Hannah's comment, this notion out there that this brings new life to the manhunt, that this is going to you know, spur law enforcement into action. I don't think they want him any more now than they wanted him before, think, and they, yeah, want, exactly. they want to get him. And I think, I will say, though, um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's great speculation to talk about the fact that they, they had an idea of the cause when they said it was a homicide, right? I mean, you know, you, you talked, was there a bullet on the scene? Homicide. Was, were there marks on the body marks they might on have the observed? Were the body yeah. in a certain area? Homicide. Um, I th something let them believe it was a homicide. And now, of course, it could have been something they found in a phone 
I don't know. It could have been a note. Yeah. Uh, could have been. I don't know. But uh, but at this point, I think I think they and I think that so there isn't they're after this guy. And I will say this too: look up the definition of person of interest and suspect, and they're pretty close. They're not that far away. So so they they have some thoughts that he knows something beyond using her credit cards. Now we can say her credit cards. Yeah. Right? Beyond using her credit cards, they, they they suspect no doubt for all this time. He knows something about her disappearance. And tomorrow, JB, will be October 13th. will be one month since his family's corrected timeline, the last time they say they saw him on that Monday. Just an interesting, on a note of our coverage, JB, that Monday night was the first night I filed a report about this story was as his name was starting to get out there after the missing person report on the Saturday the 11th. By Monday, you had media starting to show up at the well, home. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. And, Schmidt. Mrs. Schmidt. Schmidt and then, but that Monday right? is when the family says yeah. they last saw him. Right. That Sunday night into Monday was the first time here locally and other national outlets start to pick up this story and people started to learn the names of Gabby hey. Petito. Literally, I went back in my archive. It was that Monday afternoon well, it was when I literally had our assignment desk find the address for the laundry home. Right. It was that Monday the 13th. And that of was where the though. first night a lot of us start to, to report about this is also the same day the family says, hey, that's when we Something's last saw wrong. him. But of course, initially for the last two, three weeks, we thought it was Tuesday. And they backtracked right? it to the Monday. And the Friday yep. after that Monday is when the family said, yep. we, we haven't seen him since Tuesday. And then we also found out on that Thursday of that week. They said you, they knew where he was. They knew where he was. And, the next and then day I think, what, just this week or last week? Last week we found out he was under surveillance, yeah. which means, which would beg the question, what happened? But they also said when they showed up at the home on that Saturday and they found the van, the family just gave over the attorney's card. There's no known confirmation they saw him that night or actually even spoke to him. It was, right. here's our attorney in New York. We're not saying well, who anything. Who are they watching? If they're watching. If, if they're watching the house, but yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. That's true. Well, we know, right. I've also, JB, I've been surprised about that too. Curious your thoughts that Northport Police, you know, this is turned over to the FBI. They've been talking more. I know uh, Josh Taylor spoke with Brian Enton last week, but I'm a little surprised mm -hmm. to see Northport trying to maybe come out and, and, and adjust their accounting of events because we keep talking about that press conference with the police chief saying, we know where he is. The next day, they have another missing person case on their hands. So Brady Judge said he wouldn't have lost him. That made the news, and yeah. people loved hearing that. So, yeah, I mean, there's some criticism aimed at Northport Police, fair or not. Um, and, you know, I'll say this. As someone who has participated in surveillance as a, as a reporter, it's not, as e it's not like a movie. It's not as easy as, as it looks. You, there's no, you, you know, there, there are certain things you can't do. There's a lot of things we can't do, and there are even things uh, police are limited in doing. And the other thing Josh Taylor did tell me when I interviewed him, that Monday is that they were in the process of trying to access the phone records and the bank records. We know the phone has not been found, but we know the bank records is what led to the only charge against right. Brian Laundry to right. this point. He did mention that Monday it'll take a little bit more time to access the, the bank accounts in the state to get the phone records. And we know it was a few weeks later they, they did slap this, this uh, debit card fraud charge. And now today, uh, Stephen Bertolino confirming that he's accused of using her card. Let's get to some more comments here. I'm juggling a lot here as far as uh, trying to uh, communicate with, with a lot of different people here on this story. Let's get to um, this comment here that came in a, a short time of, of ago. Amanda Green, hashtag AJB, has the date that Brian's parents initially made the reservation at the campground been released, whether his mom made the reservation after he came into town or prior. I don't remember if I heard if the, the, the date in which the reservations were made was... Uh, was out there. Any guy? Any of you guys? So we were able to confirm, according to the uh, Fort Desoto camp records from Pinellas County, that the reservation was there from the sixth to the eighth. For context, Monday the sixth was Labor Day, and when I was out at the park talking to campers, it's a popular area. Yeah. You don't just book that a week before. Again, JB, we don't know exactly when the family made the reservation. We know from. Stephen Bertolino said they were there the 6th and the 7th. We know from Cassie Laundry's comments that they went over, had s'mores there, I believe, on the Labor Day on the Monday the 6th. So we don't know when that reservation was made, but mm -hmm. we have confirmation from Stephen Bertolino that Roberta, Chris, Brian were there. And then Cassie Laundry says she and her family did see them at one point uh, when they were there for at least that two-day period, the one night. But again, that's Labor Day Monday, one of the most popular parks here in the... It could the be cancellations, but I would bet... Could be, but but they, they bet, were like yeah. spot two or three. They were right near... When I and walked in there, it seemed to be a pretty prime spot right on the water that you don't book that no, two, three days out on a holiday weekend. So that, that particular park, uh, Fort DeSoto, has... Uh, it's near, like you said, it's near the water. It's beautiful, shallow water. 
water, great place for kids, warm uh, water. You're in the woods, but you're not. There's electricity. It's a, it is a very popular place, and, I'm, and good weather, or a little, little hot for me, but still good weather. Labor Day in Florida, I, 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 yeah. You know what? I, yeah. I tell you, I'd be surprised if they were able to book that. After he with, got back on the first, like, it would be very, I yeah. would bet it would be quite a while ago. Yeah, but we do not have that confirmed. There's no way for us to really. We get just that know the dates. Place. They were yeah. there, and we've talked about how while well, this family was out there camping after their son returned with the van without his fiancee, she was MIA, and it's right. What do or do not the parents know? And that's where we are here today, October twelfth. Lisa Warden, hashtag AJB. I think that Brian could have grown his beard out and hair out, and could be in public, and no one recognizes him. So the beard. The, absolutely could have could have a pretty scruffy looking beard by now um and we've talked at great length here on the stream about how wearing a covid mask a sun you know a pair of sunglasses and a hat um makes you pretty hard to spot there have been some artist um renderings of what brian laundry might look like today and quite frankly folks it's not all that dissimilar from what he looked like over the summer uh, we, I remember we had hairstylists comment on one of our previous stream about how long the average male's um, uh, hair can grow, and it's usually about a quarter of an inch a week, if I, if I remember correctly. So it's not as if his hair would be, we're not talking Robin Williams and Jumanji here, folks. We're talking about somebody who's probably got relatively short hair still, uh, maybe a scruffy beard, um, but the entire world looking for Brian Laundry still. So I just want to point out, I just, and I'm going to say this again because I've said it before that that I we think that, and you're this the number of followers during what you've done, JB here is is remarkable, and you've done a great job, and Justin's done a great job. I think it's it says a lot about WFLA, but I would tell you we're the ones following it. Let's not assume everybody knows who he is. Mm -hmm. Whitey Bulger escaped capture for decades and and they are able to find jurors in high profile cases who say i don't, I've, I've sat in on high profile local cases where somebody says i don't know i've never followed that now some people suspect they're only saying that to get on the jury but i really believe that it is possible to disappear um forever i don't know and he is he, we've seen a lot of them more than most suspects more than whitey bulge we had an old black and white picture right this guy you know we have we've All seen the him photos walk. the videos with we've gabby from walk. the trip yep. the body camera talk. video with the, the body police. camera yep. we've seen him stressed so yes it seems like it'd be hard to hide but it might not be that hard to hide it, it just might not be let's get to some other comments that are coming in here folks um Juggling a lot here because we have a huge, obviously, we just got still so many people that are trying to get their questions in. Um, well, why don't you take this one here from Janet, and I'll continue looking for some questions and comments here. And, and actually, I'll throw both of you guys up here. Um, Janet Mahone, hey, hashtag, hey, Walt. Frozen they, again. Frozen oh, again, JV. Yeah, that's not a very flattering. Uh, no, I know. So so we got to fix, we gotta fix your camera. Yeah. We gotta fix Could your they camera. charge and try him even if they never find him? I would say no. No. No, they cannot. You could you can charge somebody without a body. I've seen it. I've, well, I've covered a case so, uh, where no body, but you can't charge him without finding him. And anyway, I've brought this up several times with you, JB and Walt. The fact that they located her so quickly. Um, back when I, I was um, up in Connecticut, there was the case of, of Jennifer Dulos, the woman who went missing, the mother of five. They still to this day have never found her body, and that was right. in Connecticut there where her. Uh, ex-husband was charged. He's since committed suicide. But in that high-profile case, they never found the woman's body. So the fact that you do have her body, we have a cause of death being strangulation, the manner being a homicide, that is obviously key to any case the FBI right. or local Huge. would build. Huge. So we know there are other cases of people who vanished, who presumed to be dead, where they never locate the body. But as to whether finding him, um, it's... They probably got to find him and bring him into court to in have some country. Whoever, that, whoever in it may some be. countries that might be possible, not in the United States of America. I want to uh, bring up another comment here. Um, let's see this one here, and it's from yeah, Lauren. I'm, I'm glad you asked I, this, Lauren. Hashtag AJB. Hey, hashtag hey, Justin. Hashtag hey, Walt. Uh, what do you think the purpose of the new statement made by Brian's lawyer was during such a a breaking announcement? And let's, again, the Teton County coroner is holding his press conference. And the statement comes in from Stephen Bertolino in East Islip, New York. Again, the, the attorney for Brian Laundrie, the attorney brought in by the family. And he issues his statement 
during the press conference. Didn't even wait for the for the press conference to end. What do, what do you guys? What I'm, do you, I'm frozen again, but I have one answer to this. I will unfreeze you. It's not you. a bad freeze. That, 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 that one is, is uh, not as so, bad. Because uh, we have such an excellent investigator on our team here, Masa Saidi. Um, I know Masa did reach out earlier to try to get some response. Uh, was surprised that the statement did come while was still going on, JB, but Masa doing her due diligence, she did reach out to the attorney earlier today to seek any new comment from Mr. Bertolino. We just happened to receive it towards the tail end of that news conference. So give Masa credit for doing her job to check in with their family attorney today. I think, um, to be honest, I don't, um, not to cr critique Mr. Bertolino, but I'm not sure a lot of attorneys make that statement. I think a lot of attorneys, especially in a possible federal case, are not talking at all. Attorneys don't generally comment during federal cases if that's what this ends up being. It is surprising. It's a great question. He's it's very surprising. But is he trying to control the message? Yeah. He doesn't really need to control the message yet. His client is a person of interest, not a suspect. But, uh, but it is odd. Um, I will say we appreciate it because we like to tell both sides of the story, and he gave us that opportunity to tell both sides of the story, at least in the early going. Give you guys one, one more moment here. I'm, 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 I have a response here from Nicole Schmidt, um, from the mom, and I just want to make sure that we have this here. Um, Cole Schmidt, of course, and as you type, we'll just bring it up. Uh, yep. Justin pointed out, uh, came came uh, forward for the first time on the 13th of September, two days after her daughter's disappearance was officially a missing persons case. Nicole Schmidt has also told us the last time she got a text from her daughter. It was an odd text. It was on the 27th of August. She uh, talked to her on the 25th, correct? Is that when she talked to her? The 25th was the last call. So the 27th was, or was the... Did she talk to her on the... Did Nicole talk to her on, on the, the 23rd? 23rd. 20, 25th. Okay. And then and the, the dad talked on the 23rd. 21st. First. Okay. okay. 21st. So anyway, so we know that's what we know about Nicole Schmidt. Uh, she has not seen her daughter uh, since July There's something the, uh, news other. conference right there and, you're talking um, about on the right, 13th. Right, that's on the 13th where she was tearful and looking for help um, that just didn't come fast enough. So here's, um, and that's why I've been uh, just a little distracted. Uh, apologies here. Uh, just um, the Nicole Schmidt, uh, Gabby's mom, uh, just, just shooting me a text here. And, um, and again, um, the, the family letting me know uh, that this wasn't news to them. They, they were given advance notice that this was, in fact, uh, the cause of death as determined by Dr. Brent Blue, the coroner there in, in Teton County. And the response here from, uh, from Gabby's mom, from Nicole Schmidt, and she's responding here specifically to Stephen Bertolino, specifically to Stephen Bertolino, the attorney for Brian Laundrie here. And I'll, I want to make sure that I have, uh, I have this right. It is... Six words. And, and it reads as follows. His words are garbage. Keep talking. His words are garbage. Keep talking. And Six words that say a lot uh, as far as uh, of the a way a parent would feel at this point, right? I Especially if they knew for a while. I don't care how long you know. If you know that's how your child died, I don't care how long you knew it. You're not getting over it. There's no closure for that. That is a, uh, that, that's just a horrible thing to imagine. Uh, and I, you know, our, I think our hearts go out, so go out to that family. Let's do this here. Let's do this here one more time. And I'll make sure that I have this here up on my screen from Eight on Your Side, Investigator Masa Saidi, who again, uh, got this statement here. I'm going to read the statement. This is from Stephen Bertolino, laundry family attorney here, and it read as follows. It came in at 2.49 uh, as we were continuing to listen in to the, uh, to the press conference there from, from Dr. Brent Blue of the Teton County Medical Examiner's Office. Gabby Petito's death at such a young age is a tragedy. While Brian Laundry is currently charged with the unauthorized use of a debit card belonging to Gabby, Brian is only considered a person of interest in relation to Gabby Petito's demise. At this time, Brian is still missing, and when he is located, we will address the pending fraud charge against him. And, and, qu and quote here from, from yeah. Stephen Bertolino, and then to which, uh, and I'll give you the, at around 3.34 Eastern time here, so less than an hour later, uh, Nicole Schmidt, Gabby's mom, uh, uh, sending me, and I confirmed that I, I was able to, to you know, pass this along to our viewers here, and she says, you can quote me on this. His words are garbage. Keep talking. 
and, and the and, keep talking part about this is almost as if just keep just keep talking. Just keep, well, I think, right? you know, I mean, that's you re- and when you reread that statement, he had, I mean, I guess now that I hear it for the fourth or fifth time, there's some definite spin in there that would frustrate any mother, I think. Um, she believes that Brian is more than a, a person of interest, I'm sure. Um, and she, she, I mean, he goes out of his way to say something we already know. Yes. Yes. He's a, he's a, he's, He's basically saying he's just wanted for credit card fraud right now. That's all. Keep talking is, is almost is almost the way it almost it almost reads to me in that Stephen Bertolino has just has just continuously put out statement after statement after statement and then had to issue the correction in, in the one in the one case as far as the timeline as to when Brian actually did uh, go missing. So keep talking to me is just yeah, keep, just keep talking. But uh, again, the the first four words of that statement, his words are garbage. In, in the words of, of Nicole Schmidt, Gabby's mom. Just one other thing for viewers joining us now. I know a lot of people ask the question about where is uh, Gabby Petito's body at this point now that the autopsy has been completed, JB. From my notes from earlier, uh, Dr. Brent Blue said the remains have been returned to the mortuary and they are working with her family on returning her home. And we know that was something that was so important to this, these parents when they made those emotional pleas at first is please help bring our daughter home. Now that the medical uh, examination has been completed, uh, the coroner did say they are working, uh, the mortuary is working with the family to return her body, I presumably believe back to New York, JB, but that is something that, um, you know, we know they had that, that powerful memorial service attended by hundreds in on Long Island, and now that the medical examination is over, uh, you know, no parent should have to ever, you know, get ready to bury a child like this, especially under these circumstances, but that the autopsy is complete, Gabby will be able to come home, not anyone would have wanted in this situation, but at least some some closure there to, to bring this, this young woman back to her family. Let's get to some other comments that are coming in here. Again, J.B. Buna, Walt Buteau, Justin Checker here with you. We'll probably try to do another 10 or so minutes, maybe um, maybe a, a little bit more here. But um, uh, again, one more time here, Lawrence, Lawrence comment. Walt, did you find it a little, little, I mean, for Bertolino? Bertolino might be releasing that statement during the presser just to get on top of how quickly, of course, news breaks these days. I mean, before you know it, everybody is talking about it and he's just trying to get get a response out there as quickly as possible. Does that does that add up to you as, as far as what you think? Yeah, and because like I mentioned, going into the news conference, this was a Zoom news conference from the corner. You had reporters here in Florida watching, reporters in New York, out west in, in Wyoming, in, in Salt Lake City, and, and national outlets. So you had a lot of people, a lot of interest in this news conference. And really the... The four, or the, really have been five key news conferences, I think, in this investigation. The first was that 13th when Nicole Schmidt and um, the stepfather came out, made the emotional plea. Then you had the press conference with Joseph Petito and the Northport Police Department where they made that thing where the chief said, we know where he is, the next day he's missing. Then you had the FBI when the agent came out to say these are likely her remains and he was visibly emotional about this, yeah. this horrific discovery. Unique. Unique for an FBI And the fourth big way. day was the day the family came out to announce the Gabby Petito Foundation. You had her two sets of parents there standing in unison uh, with the, their attorney announcing the foundation and then the fifth being today. So to me, those are the five dates where we've had public news conferences to hear from the key players in this case. We talked about Stephen Berlino canceled the one day he wanted to do a news conference when they ruled her death a homicide. But he's been putting out statements pretty much, you know, he's been responsive, this JB. This statement and, and, does his client absolutely, I, I just no, no good whatsoever. And it's again, great the, for us. We get to sit, tell his yeah. side, but, but he's, it's spin and it's, and again, I, I don't know. I, I, it's, I, it's unique. In a case like this, I think most attorneys would not say a thing. And I was surprised the statement acknowledges the debit card is hers, which uh, the family had told Could Dr. Could a slip up on his part. But I think the assumption was there. We just don't report assumptions. I've been asked, come on, Walt. That's got to be hers. Who's well, else we would be? Well, we can source it to the attorneys the, the, from both sides. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Let's get to some more questions and comments here, folks. JB Buna, Walt Buteau, Justin Checker. All right, Beth here. Hashtag JB, hashtag Walt. When was the FBI made aware of the autopsy report? Today with the rest of us? Will the cause of death give them enough to charge him now? So let's, let's take these one at a time here for Beth. Uh, we don't know when the FBI was made aware of the results of the autopsy report. Um, and, and today with the rest of us, will the cause of death uh, uh, give them enough to charge him now? What do you guys, what do you guys think on... I, I suspect they've known the cause of death before we did. 
I think. The parents say they knew, which I think is kind, if you will. If maybe that's, I guess that's the right word, to give the parents a heads, heads up about that so that they can deal with it. Um, although this is just uh, the worst thing for a parent to imagine. Um, as a parent, I can't imagine it. Um, and, um, and again, uh, well, as far as enough to charge him, you have to be able to, uh, to charge someone, I should say, you have to you have to be able to, you know, have the evidence where a judge is going to say, okay, okay, we believe it. You want that evidence, and you, I think, in a best case scenario, want physical evidence. What physical evidence is going to connect someone to a strangulation? And you mentioned that they did say DNA was turned over again. We know. A little difficult with DNA, I think, in this because, case. Only they because they were in so much contact in, together, right, living out right, of the van together. Right, but right. if there's but certain still, DNA on right? certain, certain thing, markings right? where right. that could help, and we'll have to, and DNA can't process that overnight. And you know, they, and the, do, they need to, do they need to charge him yet? I'm not sure that a, a, um, some sort of uh, a, a murder charge of someone, does that, does that change anything as far as resources? I think right now he's a fugitive from a federal crime. I think the resources are out there. I don't think they're holding back on resources because he's not charged. And I think they'll charge him when they believe they have a case. And we've seen how much manpower they put into the search of the reserve. Where right. The family says he went off on that Tuesday, now Monday. Right. Um, and again, his, his, like you said, not everyone will recognize who this guy is, but this story has really captivated the country oh, and that right. most the, people... The, the country, the, yeah, the you know, world. Yeah. And, and yeah. not just on our traditional mediums. We talk about the social media side of it, the Instagram, it's amazing. TikTok, obviously us you know, here sharing this with you on Facebook yeah. and YouTube. So his face is out there for people who are news junkies and those who become, you know, really, you know, uh, want to see closure and justice for Gabby. People, people know who this, this couple was. Tara, Tara Beck with hashtag KJB. Is the coroner allowed to release more information about the autopsy to the family versus the media and the public? As I understand it now, this is, this is actually a very good question from Tara. This is a good question. And as I understand it, the answer to that is, is no. As, as I understand it, that the family would be given the same amount of information that the public, but they were given the courtesy, of course, and, and it is a common common courtesy with uh, with autopsies and and uh, of, of course with stories of this magnitude for the family to find out this information first rather than learn it from the right. media and learn it from an official capacity right. such as a press conference to give them time to uh to process it to, to process it it's a, a an impossible thing to process but um i i don't you know again the key word there i see is allowed I would say allowed, no. I would say, does it happen? I would say it, it might happen. We have no idea whether it happened here. Another, we, we talked about, we were a little bit surprised, <coughs> guys, that the coroner did this news conference. But with all the attention, imagine all the daily calls, requests emails, and phone yeah. calls that uh, Dr. Blue's office had been receiving. I think he wanted to come out, tell us what he could. As you know, we know through public records, we can find out the cause and manner of death. This is obviously a little different because it's so high profile in a national case. I feel like he wanted to put to bed the just daily inquiries from reporters, local, national, and that's why he did the news conference today. That that's my hunch Good as theory. to why yeah. he came out and did this with media from across the country uh, tuning in on Zoom. Tara, thanks a lot for your question and your comment here again. JB Buno, Walt Buteau. Justin Shecker here with you live, everybody on WFLA Now. The coroner saying that Gabby Petito uh, died of, of strangulation. Um, we're going to take some more comments and questions here in just a moment. Just a moment here. Uh, we'll try to go rapid fire through the queue here in just a, a moment. But Walt, Justin, I want to bring you guys up here on screen. Where does this go now? What, what, is, what, is, what is next here in this case? The search continues for Brian Laundry. Um, he remains a wanted fugitive for the debit card fraud. Again, now confirmed or the attorneys for her family and his family say it was indeed her credit card. We know the FBI still seeking tips information. We've honed in this timeline that the coroner says he believes the body was out there for three to four weeks before when she was found on September 19th. Walt and I were really honed in on the 27th to the 30th being those three dates the FBI was focused on. Um, so again, it, it's, it's where is Brian? Where will, if he is on the run, where is that trip up that he will be spotted or seen or found? And, and we will stay on top of this and, and continue to report the facts and, and where they lead us. And the search continues for the prime person of interest, the boyfriend fiance who went out on a picturesque cross country road trip with this young woman. He returned home. She did not. And now it's a, a, a national uh, investigation to try to find out where is Brian Laundry. I think we're 
going to be able to show you in the next few days and uncover, depending on filings or documents we may get or statements, just keep in mind, there's a lot more going on than we are going to know about. The FBI is, uh, is, is looking in places we don't know about and running down leads they're not going to tell us about. And I'm not saying that with spite at all. I understand the process. Their job is not necessarily, uh, their job is not to inform us. Um, their job is to build a case. And we believe that's what they're doing. Um, so we will only see a portion of that in the days to come. Um, now on the 12th, is it the 12th? The 12th October 12th. Of October. And tomorrow's one day one, since the tomorrow, family says right. they last saw so him. So she's been now a missing person for a month. She has been uh, dead for even longer than that. And, um, and I think that it's just a matter of time before they are able to track down Brian Laundry. Although, as I say that, Whitey Bulger comes to mind and other fugitives come to mind. You just, you just never know. I, I, but you do believe they're looking. And, and keep in mind, we are, we're tapping, many of us are tapping into the same resources every single day to try to bring you in accurate information as quickly as possible. All right, folks. Uh, seeing some folks here asking about possible activity at the house, the laundry house here. Uh, we do have a crew here uh, at the uh, Justin. Do me a favor. I just shot a text over to to our uh, to uh, uh, our other colleague Justin. Would you do the? Would you just shoot a text over to Allison Henning uh, see. and see if uh, we can any find out any activity there? Any yeah. activity at the house? I, 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 the comment section just lit up. JB, is there? Is there activity at the house? Is there activity at the house? We did have a live feed from outside of the laundry house earlier. Uh, if uh, we do have that live feed to bring you. Bring you here on WFLA now. Tap she, the touch she may be, she, I know she was covering the, uh, we talked about the memorial being taken down, so she could be actually live on the air right now, she, JB. I can confirm that she is not live on the air at the moment, oh, looking the moment. here at our feeds. Okay. Um, we but, did, it did look quiet earlier, but an hour ago when we had uh, Justin Rogers' picture of the house, we know things have calmed down over the last few weeks, not as many protesters out there in front. Um, so as of a little bit earlier, it looked fairly quiet outside the laundry household in Northport. Yeah, so Kenzie Moore, hashtag KJB, hashtag Walt, hashtag Justin, is it true that the FBI is back the laundry house? Uh, I, I just saw this could have been one comment uh, that just snowballed into a lot of comments. And then, of course, it's on YouTube where they, you know, they fly in and Facebook as they fly in that people are then believing this to be true. Let's let's talk to the, the reporters that are actually there and we'll find out here uh, momentarily here, folks. We'll get to some more of your uh, your hashtag. Uh, hey, JB, hashtag. Hey, Walt, hashtag. Hey, Justin comments. Do either of you guys need to hop off stream here? No, Any I'm all right. OK, I'm um, just checking in. Um, you know, this is an interesting question. Uh, Julian, uh, Julian Car Carlismo, hashtag AJB. Why hasn't Bertolino hmm. showed his face or done an in-person presser? And let's not forget that in September uh, there was a press conference that was scheduled by Stephen Bertolino, and then it was uh, canceled. Uh, that they were going to do the presser, and then it was canceled. Um, and so we have not yet seen a public appearance from Stephen Bertolino, even though he is one of the most uh, vocal people in this story, uh, communicating through text messages uh, to to members of the media and to. Uh, He's basically been a spokesperson for the laundries because we haven't heard from the laundries nope. either, other than Cassie. Um, but you know, I, I and I just like to point out he doesn't have to show his face. He oh. doesn't have to do anything. I just got an update from Justin Rogers, our photojournalist there at the house. So all right, so so everybody like Kenzie here asking, is there FBI at the house? There's police now on the block. Um, and I'll read this here from hmm. Justin. Uh, Northport, Northport police are outside, but it is, we're, they're told it's unrelated from what we're gathering from them. Uh, they were going to neighbors' houses there on the block. So hmm. Northport police uh, are there on the block, but right now paying attention to the neighbors' houses here. And they might be um, not sure if they're um, checking in with residents there or if there's a particular hmm. certain reason for their visit to neighbors there on the street. But, Interesting. Um, but not FBI. So that can that is something that we can uh, pass along here. No FBI or, or unmarked vehicles that could be FBI have pulled up to the Brian Laundry home um, in Northport. Um, and that would have been can you, that would have been something. Yeah. Um, can you imagine if, I mean, and again, we don't know when's the FBI going to make their next visit if they are going to make another visit to the laundry home. They won't home. tell we us. They're, they're, they're never there. going right. to telegraph that to the world, but, um, but no. And people who are speculating here in the comment section, there is no unmarked vehicle, no possible FBI. No one, even the police that are there haven't approached the laundry home itself. Uh, they're going to neighbor's homes and focusing their attention on neighbor's homes there on the street there uh, in Northport. Um, 
All right, here, folks. Um, looking for some more hashtag KJB questions and comments here in our in our in our queue, um, and I think that we're going to start to wrap up here, everybody on WFLA now. Um, you know, I, I'll bring up this comment here from Gabby Reynolds here really quickly. Hashtag KJB, hashtag Justin. Not a question, but I want to commend the parents of Gabby. All four of them have been completely stoic and advocates for domestic violence. Gosh, bless them and their angel. Not only, yeah, they've launched the Gabby Petito Foundation. I want to talk about the Gabby Petito Foundation for just a second because people have been asking me, what is what is that about? It, it's so the Gabby Petito Foundation is going to help the families of missing persons, and there will be additional causes uh, that they are going to uh, dedicate that that particular foundation towards in the future. But right now, that's really the mission statement. Um, there's uh, of course been details shared online from uh, from all of us and others. Um, so if you want more details on the Gabby Petito Foundation, just go to gabbypetitofoundation.org. Um, Let's go around the horn here, Walt. We'll start with you here um, as we wrap up here on WFLA now. Uh, your your thoughts here on the um, on this terrible news that we get today, as far as Gabby Petito dying of, of strangulation, as far as how it impacts now how we move forward. It uh, well, obviously, it um, it lets us know something that I believe the FBI more than likely already suspected, and we're all already trying to build a case toward. Um, and I think it uh, it's heartbreaking of all the possibilities. It seems like perhaps one of the worst ways that, uh, that somebody's life could come to an end. Um, if it is domestic violence, I would say that's especially true because it takes, I remember from a case I covered, um, four, I think it's four to five minutes to strangle somebody. Um, that's a long time. That's a long, long time. And, and the victim is left, uh, is alive during part of that time. And, it's the, and, and you just go, you know, hearts, hearts and prayers go out to the family and friends and I think from here on out, it's a matter of, you know, the, the end, we now have most of the pieces of this puzzle. We're missing one, right? Um, we are missing one important piece, a suspect. And that's going to happen fast. But as Justin reflected on all the news conferences, the, the, I think it was a good point, four to five, I would put today's up as perhaps the most startling um, maybe tied with what the FBI told us when we found out it was a homicide, but cause of death is, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's just, it's very, very sad. The whole case is sad. We see her pictures. We know somebody like that. We may have a little sister like that, a daughter, a friend. And I think that's why this case has just sort of brought so many people, um, in, in, into watching it. And, uh, meanwhile, the search for Brian, uh, Brian Laundry continues. And just to jump off that, really how fast moving this has all been from September 11th, a little over a month ago, is when this young woman was reported missing. Right. I think back to when Nicole Schmidt had said that emotional news conference that the detective who took on the missing person report was her angel. And she was very emotional thanking that uh, New York detective. And to go from eight days later to finding her body in the last three, four weeks of investigation to determine this was, like you said, a just a horrific manner of death, a strangulation a, a beautiful young woman like that like you said we all see her like a like a younger sister or, or a daughter or a friend someone we knew just you know so much free spirit lively enjoying her life and to to be killed that way is just absolutely horrific i think what jb brought up i think is important that the family was notified about this cause of death before today they'd yeah. have to find out with the rest of us i think that is good very very important and the other thing i mentioned earlier now that the the medical investigation is now being wrapped up that Gabby can finally go home to her family and they're going to work out those details. And again, we saw that emotional memorial service and can only imagine whether the funeral will be private or not, but just, you know, that, that Joseph Petito wanted his daughter to come home, not like this. And I go back to, I mentioned this a few times when I interviewed him, he said to me, he's going to believe she's out there off the grid, lost without her phone until he is told otherwise. And here we are about four weeks later, uh, the coroner revealing that his beautiful daughter was, was sadly strangled to death. Difficult news, I'm sure, for a lot of folks to to digest. Everybody, give a follow on social media to Eight on Your Side. Senior investigator Walt Puteau, uh, of course, has been following this story uh, over the last month. Uh, Justin Checker, of course, at WFLA News Channel Eight here in, in, in Tampa. We're all part of the WFLA uh, News Channel Eight team. The family here, the Eight on Your Side family here, uh, and it's great to have, of course, Justin Walt. We had Massa, um, one of our other Eight on Your Side investigators, here live with us on stream a little bit earlier on. Uh, fellas, I'd like to just uh, thank you for uh, for helping out today on WFLA Now. And thank you, JB, Thanks, JB. and uh, keep, keep up, up the, the great
great work. work. Yeah, you've really uh, done a lot, bring attention to this story, and, uh, and a lot of people appreciate it. All right, guys, uh, give Justin a, and Walt a follow on social media and catch them tonight on your NBC station, 8 on your side here in Tampa Bay. As we begin to wrap up here on WFLA Now, uh, difficult news. Difficult news. I'm sure it was uh, most difficult of all for, uh, for Gabby's, Gabby's mom, Nicole Schmidt, for Gabby's father, um, Joe Petito, uh, the stepmo- stepmother, Tara Petito, and, and also, of course, Jim Schmidt, uh, step- the step parents as well. They're very much a four co parent unit as far as how they raised Gabby. And I would imagine that it was extremely difficult news for, for all of them. And again, uh, Nicole uh, shooting me a text here and passing along the response to Stephen Bertolino's statement saying his words are garbage, keep talking. Uh, This is a family that wants justice, a family that wants there to be justice for their daughter, Gabby Petito. So we're going to continue, of course, to stay on this story. Uh, we're concluding our WFLA Now live stream, but that doesn't mean that the coverage ends here. The coverage really just now, uh, so many people have been commenting at me over the last several days. My goodness, it's been so quiet, so quiet. JB, is, are there updates? Uh, people following Brian Enton so closely on uh, from News Nation, our, our colleague here as far as Next Star Nation, following us, uh, Brian Enton, myself, and Walt, and Justin, and Allison, and Massa, everybody here so closely just clamoring for any updates, signing up for push alerts for every tweet that goes out. Um, we know that you are, of course, invested in the story and want there to be justice for Gabby. We are going to stay on the story. Our team here, I can speak for our team here, WFLA News Channel 8, committed here to the story, getting you answers, and continuously, of course, staying, uh, staying right there with the facts, uh, the facts of the case. And the facts are that the coroner just said in the press conference this afternoon that Gabby Petito, at, at 22 years old, died of strangulation. And more details, I'm sure, um, will... We'll, at the at the time that they need to be, they will become available. Um, but right now, this is all we have to go by. It's m- way more than we knew uh, just several hours ago or really a week or so ago. So the story doesn't end here. Coverage continues here on WFLA.com, the WFLA app. I'm going to take a momentary break here. We've been live on stream now. Let's see here, live for, on stream for about two hours and 12 minutes. I'm going to be stepping away here for just a moment, catch my breath, and then I'm going to head over to my WFLA JB Instagram account um, on WFLA Now. And I've, I've said the apologies. I've said this so many times before. On WFLA Now, there are some platforms that we can't go live on. Uh, we can't go live on, on Instagram with WFLA Now and feature Walt and feature Justin and feature Masa. Uh, we can go live on, on Twitter and we can go live on Facebook and we can go live on WFLA.com, the WFLA app, and, and we can go live on those social media. We're live for still 50 or so thousand on YouTube, but we don't get a chance to interact with the Instagram audience. I know that there is a, an audience out there that specifically uh, follows Instagram. So I'm going to take more of your hashtag HeyJB questions and comments on my WFLA JB Instagram account coming up here at about 4.30. So 4.30 uh, Eastern time. The time right now is 4.13 Eastern. So in about 15 or so minutes, I'm going to go live on my WFLA JB Instagram account just to kind of connect with the audience there and and hear what you guys have to say, answer some questions, uh, try to go through the latest of what we learned today, how this, uh, how this now evolves moving forward. Uh, but uh, let's all keep confidence and keep optimism and hope with the FBI as far as uh, bringing, this, uh, bringing this case to, to a conclusion of justice. Let's hope that the FBI is, uh, and, and just be, um, you know, have some optimism for the FBI and publicly here that we're going to get the resolution that everybody is, is so, so desperately seeking, and that's justice for Gabby Petito. Brian Laundry, we don't know where he is. We don't know if he's alive. We don't know if he's dead. We don't know if he's in Florida. We don't know if he's in the Appalachian Trail. We don't know if he's in Canada, Mexico, New Zealand, Africa. We have no idea where he is. The FBI might, but we don't. But the FBI is, uh, has been continuously, of course, working this around the clock as far as trying to find Brian Laundry because he is, again, the sole person of interest in the FBI-led criminal investigation that is the homicide of Gabby Petito, which we now know, according to the coroner here in Teton County, was as a result of strangulation. So we're going to stay here on this story, and we want to let you know that, of course, right now we're in the 4 o'clock newscast, your NBC station right now in Tampa Bay for our Tampa Bay audience here uh, in the Tampa Bay area of Florida, 
Uh, hello there to you. Thank you for watching. You can grab your remote control, turn on your televisions, go to your NBC station right now. That's WFLA News Channel 8, 8 on your side. We're currently live in the 4 o'clock newscast. We've got the 5, 6, 7 o'clock newscasts uh, right around the corner. And for those of you joining us outside of the coverage area, you can watch those newscasts. You can get our team coverage by going to WFLA.com and clicking on Watch Live and watch our newscasts. But also, our entire article hub with the latest on Gabby Petito, the latest on Brian Laundry all of the updates as they occur, including the timeline that we showed you earlier. That's all on WFLA.com and the WFLA app. We encourage you to head over there to read the latest in addition to getting it uh, from ourselves, from Justin and Walt and Masa and myself. So folks, I'll be stepping away. I'll see you over at the WFLA JB uh, Instagram account at, uh, at 4.30 Eastern time. That's 15 minutes from now. We appreciate you spending a part of your of your, uh, your afternoon here with us. And again, the latest on Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry is available to you right now on WFLA.com and the WFLA app.